It's time for Fight News Now Extra. My name is John Pollock. We've got John Ramdeen and Robin Black coming up to chat about all of today's news, including exclusive comments from Paul Daly coming off of his K1 Max victory. Misha Tate issues a challenge, and we have a pair of bantamweight fights coming up in December. Hedden Barrow will make his return to the Octagon before the end of the year, with Mitch Gagnon scheduled to face the former champion on December the 20th at the Fight Night card in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The two will serve as the co-feature on the card, which is headlined by Lyoto Machida and C.B. Dalloway. Gagnon has won his last four fights inside of the UFC, most recently submitting Roman Salazar in Halifax. Uriah Faber has been added to the UFC 181 card on December the 6th in Las Vegas as he will square off against Francisco Rivera. Faber defeated Alex Caceres back in July at UFC 175, but a rib injury prevented him from fighting at the Sacramento card in August as well as Japan in September. Rivera is 10-3, having fought in the UFC since 2012 and is coming off a unanimous decision loss to Takei Mizugaki at UFC 173 back in May. Misha Tate is looking ahead for her next fight to be more exciting than her last as she spoke to AskMen.com and said she would like to throw out a challenge to the undefeated Betch Kohea. Tate said her last two opponents just wanted to grab a hold and take her down in reference to Liz Carmouche and Reed Nakai, which she won by decision in both bouts. And finally, we check in with Paul Daly, who was victorious this past Saturday at the K1 Max card in Thailand. John Ramdeen spoke to the victorious Daly, who was also signed with Bellator as one of Scott Coker's first moves as the new company president. We watched the guy's footage. We knew he was a southpaw, but he was extremely awkward. He was very good at maintaining range, and his left kick was the hardest kick I've ever felt. And I've had a few fights, and that was most definitely the hardest kick I've ever felt. Um, like I said at the post fight, there's, there was no other way I could have win but to make it a brawl. Because I couldn't have gotten to a rhythm of putting combinations together because his range was really, really good. The punches weren't very heavy, although he caught with some. The knees, they weren't really heavy either, but those kicks were most definitely, everyone was taking, especially in the first round, everyone was taking something out of me. But this is why I'm a fighter. I, I had to think to myself, how am I going to win this fight? And I couldn't stay on the outside. I just had to force my way in and, uh, you know, however, just, just land a few shots. And you just heard from Paul Daly there. Some fantastic camera work, I thought, there. Beautiful uh, framing. I agree. 100%. Paul Daly. How did he look firsthand? Yeah, it was great. Uh, he was very excited. He says, you know, just to be able to help the K1 brand rebuild. And he said, you know, he's been working with some of the best kickboxers in the world. Gokan Saki, Melvin Manhoff, all those guys, and Mike's gym. And he says, you know, I do pretty well against these guys, so I'm more than happy to make my K1 debut. He said, you know, I don't define myself as a mixed martial artist or a uh, stand-up fighter. He is a fighter in general. He's down, but he said this fight wasn't very, wasn't easy. So you anticipate he'll go back and forth yes, with Bellator sir. and yeah. K1? Yeah, that's the plan. You know, uh, they were just talking to a Glory exec. There's an article. I saw it on Bloody Elbow. It may have been quoted from somewhere else. But uh, and Glory was talking about how they'd love to have the Donald Cerrone's and the Edson Barbosa's of the world Makes over sense. in Glory fighting as well. I don't think the UFC would be going for that. <laughs> they, they don't even not. want you. Oh, like, you guys <laughs> want these guys? <laughs> sure. Yeah, take them. Take them. Take them. And vice versa. We're also seeing Joe Schilling make the move over to mixed martial arts. So it's kind of a good time for combat sports in general just to see the crossover. I think it's imperative that you do add some name value. Meta Morris, I think, has learned that lesson. Yep. That, you know, these are very expensive shows. Let's get some name identity identity and transfer them over. We're going to see Roy McDonald do the, the November 22nd card. Uh, looking ahead to December, a pair of bantamweight fights have been announced involving Henan Barrow and Uriah Faber, but not with one another, with separate opponents. We've got Henan Barrow and Mitch Gagnon. Let's talk about this one first. If you are, Robin, you've managed a number of fighters. Is this the kind of fight, I'm kind of mixed here, is this too much for a guy to be throwing at? Or is this the kind of test where we've seen in the past where there is this discrepancy and a guy is going to train harder than he has ever fought before because of this challenge that's in front of him. I think this is a monumental task for Mitch Gagnon. Yeah, I was training with Mitch Gagnon leading up to this last fight. There's a lot of things, a lot of thoughts I have on it. One was, man, after you beat this guy, go call out Hennem Barrow, I said to him. Mitch is like, I'm not a guy who calls people out. I'm like, dude, this guy is like right at the top. He slid out. The first guy who fights him is now, at, if they can win, and that's tough, is now in the top 
top five, maybe one away. You got a great fight against him. Now you're the guy challenging for the title. He was like, I don't call guys out. Well, they got the call regardless. But also, Mitch in the gym is a monster. He's one of these great leaders. He's the guy, the first guy out on the floor. Somebody's trying to stop their herd. He just looks at you and goes, can you do that in a fight? He just is a leader. And at the end, everybody's exhausted and sore and as ice everywhere. And he goes, coach, could you find me a couple more rounds? Mitch is a hard worker. Mitch is skilled everywhere. If this is seven or eight to one, go make yourself some money. Those this is a probably possible. Probably will be the odds. Yeah, this is possible. It's a possible win for a really skilled guy. I, I love this fight for Mitch Gagnon, but you know, do I think that he can win this fight? It's going to be a huge task, considering the fact that Hennon Burrow has defeated Eddie Wineland, Uriah Faber a couple of times. Uh, you just look at the list of guys. He, uh, Michael McDonald, the future at 135 He's pounds. He's at worst the number three bantamweight he, in the world. I, I agree. So, and what, what does this do for Mitch Gagnon? It opens him up to that next level of competition. So let's just say he goes out there and manages to get a victory over Henan Burrell. Well, what's next for him? Uriah Faber could be next for him. Eddie Wineland oh, could be next. The reward is gigantic. Yeah, of course. But this is such a huge fight. And you're going down to Brazil here to take on Henan Burrell. That's crazy. Sometimes we just look at that anything can happen in a fight, but let's not forget this is Hedden Burrow, and I think yeah. so many people just have that last performance against TJ Dillashaw on their mind. This is a guy who is as skilled as anyone at 135 pounds. Yeah, and that's true, but you know, when can you get this guy? Maybe when there's some doubts in his mind, his missed first weight. fight, missed weight, lost the title. So I think it's a perfect opportunity for Mitch Gagnon to seize that. He seems like he's so mentally strong, yeah. and he's a guy that believes that he should be facing the best guys in the world. Well, now it's your opportunity to go Go out and prove it. Try to make yourself as much money as humanly yeah, possible. Yeah, having said all that, like, make no mistake, Hennon Barrow is a massive favorite for a reason. L the other fight that has been announced, December the 6th, Uriah Faber, Bizarre. Francisco Rivera. No interest. I don't know why this fight's happening other than I think Uriah Faber wants to stay busy. It's a guy coming off a loss. There is, conversely, no reward for Uriah Faber here. I think it's just keeping him busy, and I don't think it's a fight that is uh, of any interest to most people, what, what other you, than Uriah Faber is fighting. What does Uriah Faber get paid? Like 75 yeah, and 75 a or a lot? Yeah. Uh, what does he look Ooh, forward to? That, that's he looks great. Forward I'm not to paying for Uriah bonus. Faber's well, bank I want to watch Uriah Faber fight I, I, any I night of the I week. Yeah. Well, it's Francisco Rivera. Giddy it's up. Uriah Faber. More Fight News Now Extra is coming your way.